have been whale watching since I was a kid, so getting to do that again was so much fun. I loved it. I don't remember if I've ever said this, but I love marine life, so getting to experience this was really, really fun for me. It's such a beautiful day here. This is probably the first day on my vacation where I'm not freezing. And also there's not much prominence of fall fall yes just yet here. It feels so small while I'm here. Everything's so big, so I keep looking up to see everything. It's beautiful, but I'm just not used to it. Right behind me is the Old South Eating House. It was built in 1726. This is where the Boston Tea Party happened in December. I can't remember what year, I'm sorry. It's known for one of the largest congregations to come together and talk about politics for revolutionary Boston. And now it's a historical landmark and museum. I'm not into American history that much just because my mom rattled off to me a lot when I was younger and also my private school that I attended was obsessed with American history so now I'm not into it as much. I still appreciate coming here and seeing American history. I would also like to clarify that I don't hate it or dislike it or anything. I just heard it a lot when I was growing up. So I like to hear more about others, like world history. Right behind me is Old State House. It was built in 1713. It was for the seat of British power. And then it eventually became the site of the Boston Massacre. Eventually, it became a site where there was political debates about the self-government, which led to the revolution. So once again, here's another great site of our history, right in the little town of Boston. Can we talk about how beautiful the architecture in Boston is? I think it's stunning, don't you think? This is a great place to go if you need something to eat while you're exploring Boston. There are so many good choices. I absolutely love it when buildings have this ivory look to it. I think it's so aesthetic pleasing. <laughs> If I have a brick house, a white brick house with this ivory on the side, I will be happy. It, it's beautiful. There is so much to do here and so much to see that I know I'm not going to get to all of it, but 
but I'm just giving you a heads up that if you want to come here, there is so much. Oh, yeah. So okay. you're going to have to plan accordingly to make sure you're going to see everything that you want. I just noticed something. So typically, when I'm in cities or I'm in a new place, I get really nervous about getting lost or walking aimlessly because I don't have any control and I kind of freak out. But right now, I'm just walking aimlessly because I'm not really feeling like I need to go anywhere or be in a rush and actually I'm feeling kind of calm which has never happened before and I see that as a huge sign of growth because I know that if I truly ever get lost I have my phone I have resources I have my friends you know I have people to back me up to make sure that I'm okay and that's so reassuring and I'm so proud of myself that I was able to recognize that This is a Florentine cannoli. It has a harder shell on the outside and apparently it's ranked as the second best in Boston. Let's try it. I cannot believe this is even real. This is freaking amazing. Two things. I've never had a cannoli, so this is my first one and I'm never going to be the same. Secondly, I'm right beside the street here, and it's heavy traffic right now. And the drivers in mass are savage. Let's try the second one. This is chocolate chip cannoli. Okay. I think I like the Florentine better, but this one's delicious. The more I'm here, the more I'm recognizing, why does this look like New York, but smaller? Is anyone else getting that? High buildings, they even copied the staircase from Times Square. What's going on? Did they copy one another? You know what I'm saying? Does anybody know? Is this legit? Cause please let me know. Cause I'm really curious. As we can see, fall is slowly coming to Boston, but it's nothing like Vermont or New Hampshire where it's in full peak. So I think Boston is, or Massachusetts I should say, is slowly getting to that point where it's becoming more of fall. I also didn't see much fall foliage when I was in Portland, but I think it's because I was on the lower end of Maine. But if I went up to the upper end, close to the border of Canada, where that national park is that everyone loves, I'd probably see more peak of fall foliage. I was thinking about going to that national park, but with everything in the driving, it would have taken me over eight hours from Lincoln to get there. <laughs> and then from there to Salem, it would have taken me over eight hours too, and it just wasn't worth it. So we'll do that another time because I really wanted to go there one day. This has been such a relaxing day, but I'm going to head for dinner because I'm getting hungry. And then I think I'm gonna head out. I'm feeling exhausted. Salem really wore me out with all that walking and I'm even feeling a little bit of it today. So I think I'm gonna call it a little bit early. That's another thing when it comes to traveling. If you're feeling tired and you don't feel like you can do much exploring anymore, then don't force yourself to do it. Go and rest. Don't act like you're never gonna come back. I have a bad habit of doing that myself and saying, oh, well, I'm never gonna get this opportunity again. What are you talking about? You can always come back. You can always plan another trip. It's important to rest so then you can continue on. Another copy of New York. They have a subway as well. And for some reason I didn't know that, it didn't click, or maybe someone did tell me and I just forgot. 
I don't know what they're scooping, but I want to know what's scooping. You know what I mean? What's happening? <laughs> As a directionally challenged individual, I am really impressed with myself because I haven't been so dependent on my GPS in Boston. And I was expecting to, but I haven't. It's actually quite easy to get around here once you get the hang of it. I mainly said that for those who are directionally challenged like me. I am there for you. I got you. And Google Maps is our best friend, especially while traveling. That's actually why I'm a little intimidated to travel to Europe or like the other side of the pond, anywhere over there, because I'm afraid I'm gonna get lost. I came back to Quincy Market because I saw this Boston chowda and I wanted to compare it to what I had in Maine. Let's see which one is better. I'm gonna try the clam chowder first because I'm really curious to see what the difference is. <laughs> Honestly, it tastes the same. <laughs> I thought maybe there was gonna be a different recipe. I will say that the one that I had in Maine had more potatoes, but this one basically tastes the same, but both are delicious. I'm actually really falling in love with clam chowder. Not bad. My fries taste like boardwalk fries. Okay, I finished my meal. I evaluated more of the clam chowder and I actually think the one from Maine is a little bit better. It was more creamy and it felt more homemade, so that's what I recommend. I am officially heading out to my next location. Don't forget to check out my other states and I will see you soon on the tube, friends.